Humans are built in such a way that no matter how hard we try, we cannot live isolated. We have to, in one way or another, interact with others. With time, we make friends who we believe should have our backs no matter what. Although sometimes, our friends may hurt us in one way or another, never in our wildest dreams, do we expect them to kill us. I mean, our friends are usually the ones we expect to help us in burying a body, and not actually turn us into a buried body. But unfortunately, there have been cases where trusted friends turn into the devil and this is one of them. Today, we're diving into the sad case of Mary Santina Collins. The months of March and April 2020 is remembered around the world as the months when the COVID-19 pandemic hit the roof and everywhere was shut down. People battled with their health and lost loved ones as a result of the virus. But for one particular family in Charlotte, North Carolina, their loved one didn't die from the COVID-19 virus, but from another kind of virus, the evil human virus. Mary Collins, a 20-year-old girl went missing after visiting friends on the 28th of March 2020. Mary, although aged 20, had the cognitive abilities of a 15-year-old, as a result of a genetic disorder known as DeGeorge syndrome, the second most common genetic disorder behind Down syndrome. Mary was known to be sweet and most times kept to herself, but she had a few acquaintances, one of them being 21-year-old Lavi Farm. Mary and Lavi had dated briefly in high school and had remained on somewhat good terms after the breakup. By 2020, Lavi had moved on to 24-year-old Kelly Lavery and Kelly wasn't nice to Mary at all. Some people believe she was jealous of the fact that Mary and Lavi had once dated, but to be honest, I think she was just a shitty human. Kelly often bullied Mary on social media by leaving mean comments like, you, nobody would want you, and if I were you, I would want to disappear as soon as possible. But, Mary never said anything back because she was scared that if she did, she might lose the only friend she had, Lavi Fam. On that fateful day, Kelly sent an Uber to pick Mary up. Due to her disability, she had problems navigating her way around and would often need help getting to places. And so, Kelly, being a good friend, sent her a ride. Now, we all know Kelly wasn't a good person so, that was surprising to Mia Alderman, Mary's grandmother. Mia, who was also her guardian tried stopping her from going with the ride but she refused. Now before you say her grandmother should have tried harder, picture trying to convince a determined teenager not to go somewhere. You would need to give them a valid reason for trying to stop them and to marry. She was going to hang out with friends so she didn't understand why her grandmother was being hard to convince. The Uber driver also told her grandmother off for trying to stop an adult from going out. Mary was kind and lovable, which endeared her to everyone she met. But on the flip side, she was also naive. Her naivety prompted her family to take steps to enhance her safety. For instance, the family shared a phone plan, allowing them to track Mary's location and this contributed to her grandmother's decision to finally let her go because, after all, she could easily monitor her location. When Mary's location showed she was at the Noda apartment complex, Mia knew she had arrived at Lavi and Kelly's apartment. Lavi fam later posted a video of three of them happily walking down a hallway after picking up a sushi delivery, which made Mia more relaxed since Mary seemed to be having fun. A few hours passed and it was time for Mary to get back home and when Mia, Mary's grandmother didn't get a text from her, she became worried. 
Mary should have texted when she was ready to leave for her to be picked up, but there was no word from her. She had also not replied any of the messages sent to her. Mary wasn't the type to stay long without checking in or even sending random messages to her family. They were that close. And so when it was radio silence from Mary, Mia knew something bad had happened. When night came and still no word from Mary, Mia decided to go look for her granddaughter herself. She went to the apartment and knocked on the couple's door, screaming her granddaughter's name. The couple opened the door and told her Mary had already left but she didn't believe them because Mary's location still showed she was within the apartment complex. Moreover, she would have definitely called someone from home to come pick her up or something since she was bad at finding her way. Mia called the police and was told to file a missing persons report. When she insisted she knew where her granddaughter was, a police officer finally responded and went to the apartment. The female officer knocked on the door, but there was no response, and so she left. The inaction by the police prompted Mia to monitor everything coming in and out of the apartment complex. Lavi and Kelly allowed Mia and Mary's mother, Casse del Pezzo, into the residence one time when they insisted on searching the apartment for Mary, but the couple prevented them from thoroughly searching the back bedroom. They kept going back to the apartment, demanding the couple bring out Mary and at one point, the police were called. Police warned Mia and Kase to stay away from the apartment or they would be arrested. Days rolled by and the search for Mary began. Family and friends came together to try make sense of her disappearance and potentially find her. Some people thought she may have just wondered about and lost her way, but family who knew the kind of relationship Mary had with Kelly believed something sinister had happened in that apartment. On April 3, 2020, a man came to make a report at the police station. According to this unnamed person, his friend, Jimmy Salerno had bragged about killing a girl. Jimmy had told him everything, the brutal attack, the body's concealment in a mattress and plans to incinerate the mattress. Authorities responded swiftly by going to search the apartment. They lifted the said mattress but found nothing underneath and so, they left. Two days later, another person came to the police. The second witness repeated everything authorities had already heard and claimed the body was still in the apartment. And so, the police returned to the apartment with a warrant to search thoroughly. This time, they made a gruesome discovery. Inside the mattress was the wrapped-up body of Mary Collins. Police had to open up the mattress to find the fully concealed 20-year-old. The killers had gone through a great deal to conceal her body. They had used dish detergent and shower gel to mask the smell of her decomposing body, wrapped her body in saran wrap and duct tape before hiding her in the mattress. Even authorities were shocked at the state they found the young woman. Autopsy revealed that she had suffered a great deal before her death. Her injuries depicted the unimaginable torture she had endured before her death. It was brought to light that she had been left in a bathtub for hours with a dog leash around her neck and had been stabbed a total of 133 times. This shows the savagery and brutality of her killers. Three people were arrested in relation to Mary's death. 21-year-old Levi Pham, 24-year-old Kelly Lavery and 18-year-old Jimmy Salerno. They were arrested on charges of murder, kidnapping, and failing to report a death. During interrogation, a fourth name came up. 18-year-old America Deal was said to have played a part in the entire thing. She had helped them clean the apartment after Mary's death. 
And so, she was also arrested and charged with concealing a death and felony accessory after the fact. Lavi, Jimmy, and America pleaded not guilty and currently, their cases are still ongoing. Kelly Lavery, on the other hand, pleaded guilty and has been sentenced to 25 to 32 years behind bars. Not enough time for such brutality carried out if you asked me. Although Mary's family wanted the life in prison sentence or even the death penalty, that didn't happen. Mary Collins' case is such a sad one. One is left to wonder if things may have turned out differently if the police had been serious with finding her from the beginning. I know there's a process to be followed when dealing with missing persons, but there should be a clause allowing things be done differently in cases that involves vulnerable people. It is sad that her story didn't get the attention of the mainstream media. This is through no fault of their own but due to the pandemic that was ravaging the entire world at the time, and so, people never got to hear about the girl who was free-spirited and lovable but unfortunately, trusted the wrong people. It is heartbreaking to think that, in a few years from now, one of her killers would be out and allowed to roam free while her family and friends continue to deal with her loss. May her beautiful soul continue to rest in peace. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Also, turn on the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a new video.